Alright, what's up guys? Solar Man, I can only hear back with another coaching commentary review type thing, whatever they're called. I don't know. <laughs> I'll get the intro one day. Uh, but today we're doing a Lissandra versus Olaf, it looks like. So, we got Chan Solo. He's in gold ELO. This game's like, he said it was like high gold, low plat MMR. So somewhere around there that informs you guys at all. I, re I really don't think that stuff really matters that much, but... Like, I don't think I can... I don't think you can be like, alright, you're in gold, too, that is, like, this type of a player. Like, I don't think it really works like that. So, I mean, obviously there's a difference between, like, a platinum player and a bronze player. Like, that's a clear distinction, but I think within, within range of, like, one bracket, like, there's probably not much of a difference between, you know, a bronze one player and a you know, silver two player. Like this they're probably relatively the same. I know I'm just making a bunch of people very mad right now. <laughs> I worked two years to get to bra to silver one. <laughs> I'm sorry, my friend. Um in terms of this matchup, it's pretty decent until level six. After level six it can be pretty difficult for Lissandra. Because Olaf has Ragnarok, which basically negates all of your slows. So if he's able to hit you with one axe, he can kind of Ragnarok in and uh, keep chasing you down. And he should even be able to land another axe on your E. Because it's really easy, because as Olaf, you can see where Lissandra is going to use her E to. So you just wait, and you throw an axe right as she takes it. And you, <laughs> you're like guaranteed to hit it. So Let's get a nice little focus on the lane here. What'd you take for... Well, I guess I'll be able to see in a second. I'm assuming you took Thunderlords, but... We'll see in a second. It didn't have, like, a match history with the thing, so I'm not really sure. Did you miss EXP for that creep? The range is, like, 1400 right now, but I think you missed EXP from this creep. Yeah, you missed EXP from that creep. You're too far away. You gotta be like in the corner up here. This one was all the way on the backside and you were all the way over there. It actually hurts you a little bit. I mean, I don't think it's gonna get punished because of the matchup you're in, but... Yeah, you're gonna be a creep behind for level 2. Ooh. I think you need to be a little bit more aggressive and like auto attack him. Like right now, multiple autos. Your autos do a lot of damage. That was the first one you did. You got like two, three. And then as he runs away, the second he turns is when you start autoing like crazy. Because you know he's un it's unlikely that he's going to come back. Alright, there we go. I like that much better. Still got to get these CS though as we're autoing. You gotta f it's not worth... We. Yeah, you've missed quite a few. So, you've gotten six... At this, once all these die, the, like the perfect number is 19 on three waves. So 19 minus 4, that's 15. So you could have had 15 right now. So I don't think it's worth the harass. you got to focus a little bit more on, on getting your creeps. Because it's, I mean, it's good to trade like harass in the early game, but it's never worth to miss like an entire wave or two waves, which is essentially what happened. Like the early CS is so important because there's... Especially in this matchup, it's like, you don't really have kill potential in the early game. Like, sure, you can poke him out a little bit, but in reality, all you're going to do is force out his potions, and he's going to pop his W to sustain back up. So, it's... I would just be focused on getting your creeps in this matchup. Like, there's really... There's, not, there's nothing you need to focus on until, like, level 5. You're not, you don't even have an, an aggressive jungler, so you're not going to get ganks early. Especially in this game, because your jungler uh, died already. So, yeah. I think you should just be passive and focusing on farm. And when you can hit him with your Q, you hit him with your Q. But that's not like your main focus. If if you, if hitting him with your Q means you miss a creep, then it's probably not worth it. You know. So I definitely think you should be a little bit more focused on creeps. I understand it is difficult to last hit with Lissandra uh, in the early game. Because her auto attack doesn't do too much damage. You want to prep these creeps though.
And what I mean by prepping the creeps is as they come in, you can be autoing them one time. Like the melees, it was pretty obvious that they were going to need two auto attacks from you to kill. So as they come in, you need to be autoing them once and autoing both of them once to set them up. So that way when the tower picks one of them, you, you only have to auto it one more time. And that way you get both those creeps. It's an extra 50 gold. It's pretty important. Oh god. Oh, this guy's just dead. Yep, he's dead. He doesn't have flash because he got his flash force before. One decent thing for you is Olaf did use both of his summoners, but you, you're in a little bit of trouble here. I'm pretty sure this guy's going to keep pushing you in though, so it's probably not going to be that bad. I'm pretty sure, like, alright, pause right here. So, if this is like me playing the Olaf, I'm gonna completely screw you over because I'm gonna let this is a wave that's clearly going to push this way four against three like it's a very slight advantage but this is all you need at this point in the wave the closer it is to the middle the less of an advantage needed so the closer it is to the middle the more even it is for reinforcements the more the extra creep determines the push so this is definitely going to be a pushing wave 100% of the time so if I'm Olaf I'm being extremely passive and letting this push Letting this next wave uh, clear, and then in 30 seconds, the one that's going to spawn, it's going to spawn in like 5 seconds. That wave is going to be the one that's going to catch up here. I know that sounds a little bit complicated, but you have to kind of think ahead. Like, Olaf just got a huge power spike, basically, because he got the blue. That means he has unlimited axe spam. Lissandra is extremely uh, weak against Olaf when she's overextended. So if I'm Olaf here, I'm letting you push me in, and I'm freezing the wave right here, and then I'm standing here. So I can get all my CS, and then if you try and walk up, I hit you with my axe, and then I just run you down. Because if you get hit with one axe, you can't really get away from Olaf. I mean, you can W him, so you can kind of get away, but you're going to get chunked out. You're going to get hit by one, two, maybe three axes. So, let's see what happens. It's, this is low elo, so I'm assuming Olaf picks up a blue buff and you just start spamming Q. So you'll, you, sh you should probably be able to farm. Yep, obviously. So you should probably be able to just farm under tower because he's going to push the wave. Nice. Get your Thunderlords off. I'd be a little bit careful about pushing the wave. Like, you want him to shove you in here. It, like, there's no reason for you to be aggressive. Yeah, see, that's just like a wasted Q. It's just extra damage that's, like, not really getting you anything. You're just kind of wasting mana. I don't think you had the proc up. So, like, the Q didn't kill anything. I don't know. I think you're spending too much mana. Like, that was a really good Q. Too much mana and too much focus on harassing when it's really going to amount to nothing. Like, there's no way that you kill this guy. Because you don't have a jungler that could possibly gank. Your jungler died twice, and it's a... It's a, um... A Warwick. Ooh. Feels bad, cannon minion. Don't worry, man. I do this all the time. <laughs> uh oh, auto that. So you got those are the ones I was talking about prepping. You got to auto it first. Yeah, even that you got to auto. Oh man. Oh man. All right, last hitting under tower with Lissandra. That's that's easily fixable. Load up a custom game. Uh, shove in the wave and then let it bounce back to you and then. Practice last hitting under the tower. Or load up a game with your buddy and let your buddy just keep shoving you in and then last hit under tower. That's a very easy thing to practice because there's no way you should miss all those creeps. Uh, it's just kind of a rhythm thing. Like, when you play Lissandra or any champion with weak autos, you have to set up the back wave correctly. So, like, you can Q and kill one of the creeps that gets hit by the tower shop, but the other ones need to be auto-attacked. So, like, the tower will hit... Say these are the three creeps that are left, right? The tower is going to hit this one. You need to auto this one and then uh, Q this one. So then the tower will hit this one next. It's already been autoed once. So you only have to auto it one more time. So you get that one. And then your Q should be back up for when this one gets hit. So that would, like, you know, you have to you have to think these things out in your mind and set up a pattern. It's very, but it's like very, it's like muscle memory type stuff though. So that's what I'm saying. Just load up a custom game and you'll be able to do it really, really easily. Just get a couple couple of times of practicing that. It'll be pretty easy. But yeah, you're you're behind a lot of CS for really no reason. Like these are all CS that you could have had. Just last hitting. Um let's see if I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine with this teleport. Okay. You need to auto it once. 
had been auto before your abilities. Like, on any champion, any champion in the game can clip abilities with auto attacks, right? So you auto and then W. So you should have, like, autoed the first melee, W'd, and then auto the second melee after. That way you get them both before any of the minions hit. So it's just, like, little stuff with, with your mechanics and last hitting. Like, I just don't think it's worth it to really harass him. Like... Just gonna pop his W, heal right back up. Worst case scenario, he pushes the wave out. Huh. I mean, as long as you're getting your CS when you're harassing him, I don't really mind it. But you've been missing quite a bit, so I think it'd be better to focus on uh, CSing here. Oh, this is gonna work out. Nice. I only missed one of those. Not bad. This is a spot where you just shove in. Perfect. You know he's backing. You just shove this in right now. Get a nice back off yourself. You're on low gold value, so... Don't push another wave. Oh, actually, you can. Never mind, you can. Definitely push another wave. Oh, this is a good call. If he has teleport here, you don't push another wave, though. Then again, if he has teleport, he might peak teleporting bottom. Okay, so if he has teleport here, and he teleports top, you obviously have to leave. If he has teleport here, I'm pretty much backing unless I see him teleport bot. Because I'm assuming that he's going to TP top. Because you already TP'd, so he's probably going to follow you. But in this case, obviously, he's running Ghost and Exhaust. So you know he can't TP. So I, I agree with taking another wave. Good call. But you got to be really fast with it. Oh, looks like you're in the back anyways. I mean, backing here is fine. Because this is going to be a shoving wave to you. Because what ends up happening here is... Uh, here, we'll show you. See how this wave forms up? So just because when you shove it into tower, this wave's going to form up, and then, so that's one, that's one advantage for this wave to shove, but then it gets even another advantage, because look where the wave meets. This would be even in lane, right? This would be like the middle of the lane, but the, it, it met all the way on this side. So that means the next wave that's come, the one that just spawned right now, is going to arrive first for the red side. So the red side is going to always push. So that's why it's pretty nice when you shove in and then back. That's why I was trying to tell you to back earlier. But, like, I do agree that you could have shoved this wave, too, if you really wanted. Like, it wouldn't have been a bad call. Although you did have kind of low mana, so it might have been an issue shoving it quick enough. Uh, and you might have opened yourself up for Olaf to get back in time and potentially freeze it. Like, you'd have to shove this wave almost instantly. And I don't, I don't know if you had the mana. So you could have got your back off and, you know, been uh, back in lane probably 10 to 15 seconds earlier. Small things, but... And then again, like I was going to say, uh, this is going to be a wave that's going to shove to you. So it's like a perfect back timing. That's why you always want to shove the wave in before you back. So quite good. Team's kind of getting obliterated elsewhere on the map, though. Echo's 2-1 right now. He's doing decent. Your bard's picking up a few kills. So like I said, I mean, he ends up shoving the wave really fast. But it doesn't matter because it's always going to catch on this next one. But yeah, you're down still quite a bit of CS. The margin hasn't really grown at all, which is good. It means it's just kind of your early game CS that you need to work on. Those early game CS when you're trying to harass with low AD and low Q damage because you only have a couple points in it. W. Nice. Q. Nice. Auto. Nice. Q. Oh, should be up now. Okay, good. You got it. That was much better. So I don't know if it was just like nerves or something in the first part. Because he did have blue buff and he was going to try and throw axe at you. So you might have been a little bit nervous. Just maybe first game of the day or some stuff. But that was much better than before. Yeah. The axe spam though. That shit hurts. What did you buy? You bought a ruby crystal. You're going rod. I like rod a lot. Rod is really, really good. Although in this matchup, you could make a case for a Zhonya's early. But it's just so expensive. It makes it such like a bad item to buy. Like, this would be a decent matchup to get it, because then you could, like, ult yourself, and then Zhonya's yourself, so you could buy your time uh, f to go through his Ragnarok, and then you could just use your snare with your W and E away, right? Like, it would be the dream situation. Oh, God. Need a self-help. Nice. I think you... Hmm. Let's back up. I think you could have baited that harder. I think the position you should have been trying to run to is right over here. This is the best spot to run to in a situation like this. It tucks you like right here because it's the farthest away. If he wants to run this way, he has to run 
the farthest away possible. If he wants to run this way, he has to run the farthest away possible. So it kind of shoehorns him into moving this way, which funnels him toward your team that could potentially be coming to help you. In this situation, obviously, there's no one near. But imagine if, like, Warwick is in blue jungle, right? And you forced this guy with, like, 10 HP to come this way. Then Warwick just comes and gets the free kill. So I think the best movement is to drag yourself over here. Because then you get a longer duration of him running away under the tower. More tower shots to him. Potentially even more because you could slow him after. So, let's see this again. Alright. So, there's your first Q. See, that's kind of what signaled him to go in. Because you were spending a lot of abilities on uh, the creeps. And you don't have anything up right now. So, Q through him. That's fine. You start moving toward your tower. I like that. Yeah, I think he could have waited a little bit longer, but eh. I think I think the you you kind of let him start to play with your W being wasted on creeps. I mean, I know you're trying to last hit better, but that's fine. I think I think you could have gotten yourself in a position over here, or at least here, and uh, I'm pretty sure you could have killed him. And obviously, if you didn't use your W, you would have had it for him. Even you even have your E up, like you could get that extra damage. It's a lot at this point. It's an extra ninety seven damage. So I think that was a potential kill if you kited over here faster. Like you were trying to dodge his axes when you really didn't have to. And I think you could have held your ult longer. Because you were at like three hundred health before you ulted it. That's like a Q E plus an auto attack. That's like plenty of time to react and uh self ult. So I think you could have dragged him even farther. Oh, but this looks like it's gonna be a kill. You didn't need to flash, but whatever. You got the kill. It's good enough. We'll take it. Let's get back up here and push this wave out. Obviously, you know he doesn't have TP, so it's pretty easy for you to do. And you just saw Echo on your bot ward, so you can definitely do another wave. Nice. You got nothing to be afraid of. Oh, there you go. Okay. The... Margin of uh, creeps hasn't really changed. It's still about the same. Got your catalyst. Okay, this might be pretty decent. His Rag Ragnarok is just coming up right now, though, so I don't know. He's not. Oh wow, he actually stayed in fight instead of just running. What the fuck? Hold up. Sorry. Had that sped up. I didn't think he was gonna go in like that. Okay. So, Max Range ults him. See, this is weird. Like, why do you try and fight? You just start running. Like, obviously you're going to lose that. You're wasting your W there. But, I mean, you guys are never going to make anything happen there. <laughs> okay. I guess you get... I guess Olaf or Warwick got ultimate for Ghost. So, I guess it's worth, but... I think the Olaf just played that really poorly. All he had to do was Ragnarok and walk away, and then he's just trading ult for ult, and then he'd be at like 70% right here. And he wouldn't be under any threat of dying. Now now you guys can just E under and dive him. You have your E up? Yeah, you just E under and dive him. Or you can just walk up to him. Yeah, okay. I just kite out. Perfect. Very good play. Yeah, I think the Olaf just made a big mistake. He could have been under tower with like 70% there. And still have ghost up. And I think that's a situation that's much better for him. And maybe potentially he can outplay. You can just shove another wave here. You just saw Echo on your bot ward. You know he doesn't have TP. That's why it's so easy to play against TP. Because you always get like two extra waves every time. So he should be catching back up now. Let's see. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's still about the same. You know, it's bouncing like 15 to 20, somewhere around there. He's going to clear out s a 7 right here. But you should be able to get back there in time. Hey, you TP up right now. Are we looking on the map? Um, To TP in, to not TP in. The, the problem here is you don't have your ultimate up, so like you're... Your TP play is relatively weak. But they're just diving so deep under tower. I think a TP here is still relatively good. 
the issue here is you basically give up top tower for your TP. So your TP has to result in like a kill of four. And these are all things that you have to figure out in like a second, obviously. Like you don't have time like me to sit here and decipher it. I think... I think I would leave them. I don't know if I would TP in here. Just depends on how far deep these guys go. Like I feel like... Like they have a Leona tanking under tower. Like she's gonna take no damage with her W up. I don't know. I, I would. I probably wouldn't TP here. I don't know. I might TP here. <laughs> it's just like there's a wave, a giant wave, and you're just gonna give up tower. So it's like you're giving up, you know, 200 CS here plus, or sorry, 200 gold here plus you're giving your opponent 400 gold. So it's like a 600 gold advantage for your opponent. So you have to make a play here. Right? You like you have to make a play. That's why I don't know if it's that worth it. I would just kind of let my team go. Take the less risky play. Like my they're diving super deep. It's pretty sure my team's gonna win that anyways. You know, like you'd be getting here just about as the team's like here. Like they're gonna be here. So maybe you can E in and then like W snare, but I don't really know if your team follows up because Warwick already ulted and these guys don't even have that much mana left. I don't know. I feel like it was the right call just to stick in top lane. Especially now when you got this guy roaming. Oh wow. Oh baby! Big plays being made in the ball lane. Wow, your team just got so far ahead on that. Okay, sweet. Well, looks like we made the right play. <laughs> the react, the, what's it called? Um, results oriented. Yeah, that's what that, that call is. I think I made the right choice. I wouldn't have teleported. I would have stayed top. You're, def you're defending a tower. You're keeping... You don't really have an advantage necessarily in the lane, but you keep yourself even, which is really where you want to be. So now if you can start hitting some poke, it's actually pretty meaningful. Because he doesn't really... I th think your sustain is honestly better than his. Because you have mana sustain, and you can like full clear these waves now. And you obviously have your sustain from your catalyst every time you level up. So you have quite a bit of sustain right now. And he's got to use his mana every time he wants to sustain. Which gives you an advantage because if he has less mana, he can throw less axes. If he throws less axes, obviously does less damage. I think you want to be throwing your E at him there too. It's just a bunch of extra damage you can get off. Yeah, you need to be using this E though. Is no magic resist, right? He has 63 magic resist. And he's at 500 health. So this does 180. This does 100. So that's 280. And this does 220. So that's 500. What was he at? 550. Factor in magic resist. It's doing like okay, so you don't have enough to burst him. But it's relatively close. You could like flash and use your Q one more time. I think it'd be really close. You could have potentially won it all in right there. I mean it's gonna it's gonna be okay because this guy's coming in hot. Uh, he's not getting anything. Yeah, I think there was a chance you could have uh all in there and use your flash to outplay. getting close you just need to farm up your next item yeah now at this point you're very scared I mean obviously you still have yourself ult so if he tries to dive you this is why I like Lissandra because they try and do stupid dives when you're low HP and then all of a sudden you self ult alright well you might as well back because this guy's gonna hold your lane I guess I don't know <laughs> interesting give you TP I think you TP in there. It's something you should be identifying very quickly. So 
Let's see when you see it. Right there. You're in base. You already bought. TP right now. TP right here saves this guy all day. 100% TP right here. Saves this guy. TP, I don't even think they follow through. These guys are both like no mana. This is free as fuck for you if you TP. This guy, this guy's ultimate. He can easily stall long enough. Like your TP comes in now. You E, you E in. W snare. Olaf's dead. You ult this guy. I think that's super free. You 100% kill Olaf, and then I don't think this guy's getting away from you. I think that was 100% free. You should have TP'd. Oh, you're TPing so late. You're TPing now. Oh no. Ah, uh, okay. Maybe you were shopping and you weren't paying attention. Because you didn't have wards to spot it out beforehand. The second you could see it is when Echo appeared right here. But yeah, you could have definitely teleported in there. Should have been a play you were thinking of there. I think you might have been caught window shopping. Still off on our large rod, or not large rod, sorry. Our uh, rod of ages. That's really what we want to be farming up here. You spot him on your ward. You almost have enough gold. Need a little bit more. Surprised you haven't spotted this one out. It's, that's one you really want to check. Especially when you don't have... Like, you haven't had lane control all game. He's been shoving you in all game. So when you get this deep ward, you probably want to check this too. I mean, I know you were going for, to clear the wave and everything, but... You could have definitely checked and cleared this. So the CS gap is still about the same. Nothing's really changed. This is why I'm saying, this is why the early CS is so important. Because this is literally 20, like, that last buy, you could have gotten your uh, rod. And that, that means this entire time you'd be stacking up. Which is a big difference. It really is. Is he soloing this? What an absolute monster. <laughs> Guy, dude. <laughs> Your opponent has no magic resist still. Like, if you can land a little bit of poke on him before. Hey. You missed two Qs though, so. You missed two Qs and you got hit by two of his. <laughs> it's not a trade you're gonna win. So, there's the pink ward that you could have cleared before, which probably would have led to a free gank here. I mean, he does have Ragnarok, so. Uh, he should have saved that ultimate. Because right now you could have used it. Ooh. Your W should be up in a second. Yeah. W! Oh no! You... <laughs> yeah! We got him in the end. Alright. Some mechanical misplays obviously right there. But use the ult after. You gotta wait for his Ragnarok to end. You were He was still like chasing past you. So there's no way he gets away from you. All you have to do... Like, he's here, and you're here. There's no way he gets away from you. Like, he has to run through you, and his Ragnarok's ending in, like, two seconds. So, just wait that shit out. You're, you're not going to save your buddy by Ragnaroking him, or by ulting him when he's in Ragnarok. Just wait for it to end. Use it right here. Finish up the free kill. <laughs> and every once in a while, it's good to, like, look down at your abilities. Like, I knew intuitively when your W was going to be coming back up. I knew it was going to be up in a couple of seconds. But then I clicked on you, and I see it's up in, like, one second, right? But that's kind of like, I don't know, take a quick glance down at your abilities and see like the cooldowns. It's just something that will help a little bit on champions with longer ones. Like I do that on Renekton still to this day with his E. Looking for when my next one's up. Like, I always look down and check. I mean it takes a, it's just a quick glance, you know. See the numbers real fast. Alright. So how we looking? Nice, we finished our rod. All right, run, 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 run. <laughs> you just use your E, so this is like the worst situation for you. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna punish you. Oh boy. Give your ult in two, one. Yep. That's what you get. You get super punished for uh, using your E. You had to, the second you saw him, after you threw your E out, you had to run away because you were dead. You're dead if he lands an axe on you because he's going to chain them and you don't have an ult up to self-heal and you don't have your um, E to get away. And Olaf's ultimate is shorter cooldown than yours, so he's always going to have his up when he comes back to lane. 
Like, his ult is, like, no cooldown. He's always going to have it. He's like a ribbon, right? Always going to have that shit up when he comes back to lane. So, that was easy to play around. You got super greedy with your E. After you threw your E out and you saw him, you had to run. Because one axe and you're dead. Because you don't have E. How are you going to get away? You just, you're overextended in a long lane. That's kind of, like, the issue in this matchup, right? Especially, when, like, when you have your ult up, it's not that big of a deal. Because you just self-ult self under the tower and you're fine there, right? But you were trying to, I mean, it was a couple seconds away. So that means you either have to play safe until it's back up. Or you just have to run away once you throw your E out. I think you were a little too cocky for, like, the last couple of creeps. Dang, if you had your teleport here, though. Whew. It's almost back up, but it's not up in time. If there was a creep right there that you could have teleported to. You'd be there right now. Boom! Blow them all up with your ultimate. I think you're pretty, pretty decent, but you didn't have your TP up, obviously, so. You're actually a roaming bot. I think this is pretty good. Dragons on the map, plus they're pressuring bots, so you save bot tower. Plus, you put yourself in a position to maybe help around dragon. Unfortunately, no one else on your team's alive, so you can't really do anything around dragon. But I do like that you went bot, especially when uh, Warwick's top, so. Good call. It's probably not something I talk enough about, deciding, like, which lane to go to when you're coming back. It's pretty important, and it's something like you have to read the waves, understand which waves coming to you, understand what objectives are on the map. You kind of have to get a sense for the game. So uh, I should probably start talking about that more. But yeah, I like that you're going back top, covering this. Obviously, probably. I think you learned your lesson, and you're not going to use your E to get back to lane. That way, when you get there, you don't you uh, you'll have it up. Unfortunately, you're going to lose this tower, but. It's not really much you could do there. That was more on um, your Warwick to hold for another wave. It's not really too much you could do there. So, your rod's getting stacked up. The mid game, it's your time to shine. God damn, there's constant fights in this bot lane. Oh! Can the bard get out? Oh, he didn't even need to ult there. Oh, this guy takes the bard ult and dies! Oh my god, that's so dumb! <laughs> They're gonna get both of them, no way! Oh man. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, I love low E, low, it's my favorite. Such like random throws, they're annihilating bot lane and then they just do these stupid throws, man. Yeah, it's not too much going on in top lane. This guy's kind of like constantly shoving you in. I feel like if this guy had any if your opponent had any sense of minion manipulation, he could have punished you so hard. Like honestly, I would be up seventy to eighty creeps on you right now. You've shown you've shown that you struggle a little bit with last hitting, and I would have been freezing the wave up here and forcing you to run an overextend and just kill you every time. Because it's pretty difficult to run away from him when he lands an axe on you, especially with uh, Swifty Boots. Because your slows are less effective on him, and obviously he has more movement speed during the times where he's not slowed to catch you. And he obviously has more movement speed during the time he is slowed. So just more movement speed in general during the fights. I like this group here, though. The team has really good wave clear. The enemy's wave clear is pretty weak. All they really have is Olaf axes. And like a little bit of Ezreal. I think you should have just stayed and kept autoing it. Okay, good. Yeah, Annie doesn't have flash. This is like something in lower ELO that no one ever thinks about. It's like anti flash timers. They don't even time it that much in my ELO, anyways. But that's like super important in a game like this. It's anti flash timer. <laughs> this guy gives no fucks. Just there to take the CS. So Bard lands a decent ult. Looks like everybody's gonna. Oh my god, this Bard, dude, that was fucking nasty. All right. Okay, this Bard's a beast. That was so good. Bard ulted, hit both of them, and then uh, walked up and. Combo to bind stun on them. Oh my god, this bard is so good! Who is this guy? What the hell? 
What a beast. He set that up so perfectly. He, and then you and everybody else just follows up in Wombos. Uh-oh. A low overstay. A little bit early on their E there. <laughs> Alright, nice. Yeah, dude, Olaf's still pretty weak. All he has is like a black cleaver. Oh god, and he's rushing a vamp scepter item. So what is that, like, Blade of the Rune King or... Oh god, oh wow, he just spent a shit ton of gold though. So he's just fighting there with like 2,000 gold in his inventory. Okay, no wonder why he died so fast and seems so weak. That's not really what you want to do. Um, Yeah, I'd just go farm jungle right here. Like, I'd go do Gromp or something. Because top wave shoving into you, or shoving away from you, so you can't really do anything about that. I would, I would have done Gromp and done Scuttle Crab here. Because you're essentially doing nothing right now. Oh, you got a, you got a, some vision clear. There you go, getting Scuttle Crab. Alright, and someone got Gromp too, so whatever. It, it all works out in the end. Oh, damn, that pink ward, dude. <laughs> Alright, nice. Finally got cleared. After someone places it once, you should definitely check the spot. Like, you saw that they placed it one time, so you should definitely keep checking. I like that you're going bot. You got TP up. So you need to be the one splitting and dealing with Olaf. I think... I don't actually know if you can win the 1v1 right now. I think he's still in a spot where... Well, I guess if it's under tower, you win. Or if you poke him a lot before the fight. So you have TP up. There is, like, not a great ward. There's this ward all the way over here, and that's about it. So I'm not even sure if you're going to TP into this. Especially since Olaf can't TP, so... Oh, you chose the worst spot. <laughs> you TP'd all the way back here. You're not going to do anything this fight. You might end up just fighting Olaf. <laughs> That's funny. Oh god. Oh, I gotta wait on that W. You just gotta be real patient. Nice, 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 nice. You gotta be patient with that W. You rush it a bit. You gotta wait for the Ragnarok to end. You can click him and see where the buff timer is gonna be. But yeah, you gotta wait on that. I like the self ult, but your team just got wrecked, wrecked. Um, in terms of the TP, there was a better one over here. This ward wasn't up at the time. This was the best ward that you could have gone to. There was there was a ward here, and then there's a pink ward in this bush. This was not a great spot because it doesn't do anything. Like even if you max E range, you're still not nowhere near the fight. This one, at least you cut off a path and they can't run up this way anywhere, anymore because you're here, so you're funneling them this way. Which gives your team a little bit easier time to catch them because you got Bard. Bard comes right over the wall, you know, catches them with a, another binding off of a wall or something. So this is the better teleport spot there. I, I know it's hard to spot during, like, you have a couple seconds to react. Obviously, I'm sitting here and finding the ward for 10 seconds, but, yeah. It's things you got to be aware of. Like, when you're splitting against Olaf, you, you understand that... Your team's trying to group, and what you need to be doing is, you, like, your goal is to, is to clear waves. Like, you don't really want to all in the guy. You just want to clear waves. Your goal is to clear waves and then TP into team fights, because he doesn't have TP. So you can get there first. In that situation, you kind of got there at the same time, and both didn't really do anything. Well, actually, I guess he got a double kill, but I mean, still wasn't really anything. <laughs> I mean, the whole fight in general just kind of traded even. It's kind of a mess. But yeah, could have had a better TP spot. And the W was... Whoa, we have K. Oh my god, this bar, dude! Four man, get in there! Oh, your ult's not up yet, okay, true. Dude, that bard though. Thought that was fun. You have distortion boots. You should think about getting distortion boots on this next buy. It'd be pretty sweet. Your flash seems pretty 
pretty important in your TP. Like you you can use your TP advantage here and like reduce the cooldown even farther because you already got uh, CDR boots, which reduces your TP. But if you fact if you get you should obviously be going top right now. Back, back. There you go. Okay, you spot it. Good. <laughs> it was gonna be so sad if that if that creep wave wiped. I'm pretty sure Lucian would have went up and got it, but you should be there in time. But yeah, you can abuse the fact that your opponent has... Like, your opponent's going to win 1v1 against you. He has exhaust. You don't have a combat summoner. So he's probably going to win 1v1 versus you. But just by pulling him into a side lane, and then tell you can always teleport because he doesn't have it. So you join the team fight before him. Uh, I guess Talon really wanted the CS. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> That's a lot of gold that you just lost out on. Yeah, your CS numbers are pretty bad. Everybody's CS numbers are pretty bad. It's kind of a low ELO issue. Not a lot of farming happens in the mid game. People kind of... Oh god, this is so good for you guys. He's like wasting his ultimate. You get an ult in the back line on Ezreal. I don't think that was actually the right play. Let's back this up. So... It's very important with Lissandra, like, she's all about how you engage these fights late game. I think this is a, the wrong engage. So, you got all your abilities up. So, let's slow it down. So, we got the E coming in here. I think that's fine. Maybe place it here. I, I think the best play is to go into a W, into a self uh, ultimate. That's like the best. That's like one of the perfect plays with Lissandra. A, you don't, you're not susceptible to dying because you're self ulting yourself. And then, like right here, you don't have your team's not going to follow up on Ezreal, right? So ulting him isn't really going to do anything. So Wing is going to lock them there, so they're stuck there. And then ulting yourself is going to give you a lot of AOE damage on all the people that you already snared. So and it's going to make a nice zone and force Ezreal to back up anyways, where essentially he's doing no damage, which is the same thing as if you kill him, right? Or if you ult him. Like, he's still locked out and not doing damage, because who is he going to hit standing all the way back here when you're in a stasis? So, and you took it a little too early, but, like I said, I think it was better to go here and then self-ult. If you go here, W, self-ult, you kill Annie, and uh, you lock these two guys down, and then this guy's going to die momentarily from your self-ultimate. Like, no one can collapse on this guy. The rest of your team's too far away. So it seems kind of wasted. And he has no mana anyway, so it's not like he's really going to contribute too much to this fight. So I think an E more into the group, and then a W um, ult is better. I don't think it's that important to lock Ezreal down at the moment. Like I said, he's still not going to do anything in this fight, but he wouldn't have done anything. He wouldn't have not done anything in this fight anyways. Then Olaf would have been like probably dead by now already, because you would have gotten your ultimate and your W damage off on him. Sure, you wouldn't have, like, you had Ragnarok, so it wouldn't have been that big of a deal, but. Looks like you guys are going to get them all in the end, so it's up. Ooh. The echo, though. Maybe not. Oh, wow. That echo just shit on your team. Oh, my God, the echo, though. Uh... <laughs> Did he just deliver a kill? No. Okay, good. Alright, well, Echo came back in and killed everybody, yeah. So, I think it could have went a lot better if you use your ultimate on yourself and use your W snare beforehand. That's basically the combo you look for with uh, Lissandra. Like, there's no one on their team that's that, like, okay, if your team can follow up on Ezreal, then it's okay to ult him in that spot, but your team just couldn't follow up, so it's not worth it. Like, you're not killing him, so it, the lockdown doesn't do anything. Like, you... In that situation, you're essentially doing a, a two-second zone on Ezreal. Like, that's all you're doing. Like, you're going to stop attacking for two seconds. Like, that's that's it. Whereas, you could have had all that extra damage on the other three people, plus the W snare on them, too. So, that's kind of the combo you want to aim for more often than not, is the more AoE, the more damage combo. Because that's going to let you win, especially in a team fight like this, where you have another AoE damage dealer. So, the more AoE you get going, the better it would probably be. What do we get for items? All right. So we finished our zonias before, now we're going for what I'm assuming is death cap. So mm, I don't really know if I like death cap, to be honest. Well well I mean I like the item, but I 
think they have enough magic resist that you probably want to get some penetration here. You have your TP up this whole time, so let's back up and see what's going on. I, I think you should have probably got some penetration. But. Death Cap's okay too. I guess if no one else buys Magic Resist right now, it'll be fine. But, like, you have Magic Resist here, you got Magic Resist here, which is doing an AoE aura for everybody. And you got another Magic Resist item here. You know. Yeah, I think it was. I think penetration is probably better. You get more damage. Then you can go with your death cap after the pen item. So let's just remember this whole time that you have TP. Hey, you could have been there way earlier. And now you end up not doing anything. Yeah, you could have TP'd in there. You end up getting wrecked. Oh my god. God. Alright. <laughs> yeah, I think you had a possibility of teleporting in there and doing something. I mean, let's back up. So, let's pause it right here. This is like where the play starts. Pretty sure you're paying attention because you're looking toward that side of the map. And you start moving there now. I just think a teleport now is just fine. Like, teleport right here. Pull the trigger. This guy's definitely going to be slowed. Spooky ghosts are coming out for follow up. Like, you can definitely get in here. Worst case scenario, the guy's like here when you get in with your teleport. And you just E, W, ult him. So I think a teleport was definitely right. And you have it up, so. There's no way this guy goes ham when you teleport in. So this guy's not like chunked out. Yeah. This fight just goes way better if you're there to begin with. Because you end up just having to run away the whole time. Because like at no point now can you ever come back in. Like your your option was with the teleport. That's going to see the Baron too. Yeah. I think you could have teleported in. I'm not saying you guys would have 100% won the fight. I think it would have just went way better, and I don't think it would have resulted in a Baron. But I like that you're making a move to the bottom side of the map. Go the farthest away from them. Make the most of the situation. Try and get a tower. There's no sense in backing, dude. You need to get the tower. You 100% you know they're doing Baron right now, and they have no TP. Hmm. I don't know. I think I stay and get tower damage. Yeah, I think you definitely kill it. You even get a, a warning when they're coming because of the Baron buff. I don't know if you get the tower. I think I think you would. You get at least like 10 autos. I think you'd get it. Yeah, I think you would have gotten it. Your autos do more than 270. Because it factors in AP and shit. I think you could have got him. Alright, you got your distortion. I like that. I think we could have gotten that earlier. I, I don't think you're using your teleport enough, though. There's a couple times where we could have gotten in. So what are we doing? So we're all grouping up in mid. Alright, they got Baron buff. They're trying to siege. Their siege is pretty shitty. Like, they have really good dive, but their siege sucks in general. All they really have is, like, all off axes and Ezreal Q. And you guys have good wave clear because of you. And, um... Talon. But yeah, they're all in. It's going to be pretty scary. With Annie flashing in. Actually, she doesn't have a flash up. But Annie going in after Leona. Leona's got flash. This guy's looking for a flank. I just don't really think that's that great of a, great of a plan. He's pretty squishy. Okay, so they ulted... They blew Annie ult on Talon. Talon blew his ult. Goes back in on Annie. Where are you? Here we go. Oh my god, the Bard ultimate. You got a W before that. You got a W because your W does your W would have killed Ezreal. I mean you do it after, but like eh. Should have done it before. It's W self ult. 
It's a lot of keys to press because I don't know what you bind yourself ultimate, but mine's alt, alt plus R. So like for me it would be W and then alt plus R. But that's like the combo you need to do there. Because then you snare and you lock the three people down for the duration of your ultimate, which is much more impactful. Alright, so looks like you guys aren't really going to get them, but I'm going to get a dragon. Third one for you guys. It's pretty good. This game's just kind of developing into like team fights, and so far no one's won a team fight like super convincingly. They've won one pretty convincingly, and that that was the one that you failed the TP into. I'm not saying that would have won you the fight or anything, but I think it would it wouldn't have resulted in a Baron. So that was like the only big team fight win. But then you guys just cleared off Baron from them right there. So you guys are definitely coming back. Yep, I like that you're heading bot. You're just gonna be shoving up. You have TP up right now. You can look to split here. I still, you still can't fight this guy. He's just ridiculous. He's got Ohm Wrecker so they can dive towers. That's insane. What do you have for a trinket right now? Oh, you're the red sweeping trinket. That's horrible. That's horrible for someone with TP. Because you, like, you never have any vision around you. Because you can't buy green wards anymore. And you've sat on your double Dorns forever. You just sold one for it. Oh, you're going Rylize. You're going Rylize. I don't like that. You need spell pen, bro. Yeah, I don't like that at all. You guys are gonna be okay. Yeah, <laughs> he's trying to trade autos with Warwick. This bard has just been landing some really good ultimates. You got in there and got some extra damage too. I don't think you guys can really catch this dude, unless Bard stuns him, and even then. Ooh, maybe. He flashed in. Oh, you got red buff. Oh my god, dude. To catch an Ezreal, or whatever this guy is, Echo. W's back up, nice. Oh, the Bard heal. Wow, the Bard heal. You're gonna live. Alright, let's see if you guys get anything off of this. These are just like fight after fight of like everybody dying but nothing happening. Okay, Bard buffed up a creep. You guys might be able to take a bot tower right here. Let's see. Bard's trying to push but looks like Ezreal's coming in. Oh god. Here comes the big plays. Lots of zones. Oh nice, they get a tower. Good job. Lucian's pushing top. Okay. I mean they're going to back out now. I think. Whee! Okay. What are we buying? Yeah, I don't like the Rylize. I like Spell Pen way better there. I just don't think you need the extra slows. Like some of them, some of them have Swifties. The others have Mercs, so the slow duration is less. Like I don't know. I don't think it's that worth. I thought that was gonna be a Death Cap or a, a Void Staff. I don't really like the Rylize there. I don't think it adds much. Like, the health isn't going to make you survive anything else. I think it's just better to have uh, Void Staff do more damage and have good positioning. Wow, they almost solo off the mid laner, but Bard gets killed. No, it looks like Lucian might die. Oh god, he's running toward them. Yikes. Might be a good fight for you, but you're going to have to, like, 1v5. It's going to be pretty hard because you don't do a lot of damage because you got Rylize, which is doing nothing against this guy. Oh, here we go. This might be good. Eh. I don't know about the ultimate on yourself. You weren't really taking any damage. I think you can do this. Maybe not. True damage OP plus CC. Alright, Bard kind of got caught doing something weird, and then Lucian got caught trying to do, trying to help the guy do something weird. It's just like weird low yellow games, man. You guys have like no vision on the map anywhere, <coughs> and uh, you guys are trying to like make these plays randomly. I still think your build's bad. You're not doing enough damage because you don't have Void Staff. And these people with like one Magic Resist item are shitting on you, and literally everyone has a Magic Resist item now. So, yeah, I think your build's not very good. I like the first two items. 
I think you're getting it now, or this is gonna be a death cap, I guess. It could be a death cap too. But I think Void Staff definitely third item. Especially when you're against an Olaf, like, that's a guy who's gonna be fucking you up. This isn't gonna do anything to him. He's barred to ults, though. He hits like three people every time. What a monster. Uh oh. Lucian's in trouble. God, it's barred. This guy's crazy. Whee. It looks like so much fun. <laughs> and now the enemy is gonna randomly get caught out. <laughs> These games are too funny. Oh, that should result in a free Baron. It's four against five. If the enemy tries to fight you, you guys should be able to win quite easily. What a strange game. Pretty good <clears throat> pretty good entrance by Echo. A little bit early, but I like the self ultimate there. Because you don't know if Andy's coming over the wall. I like the self ult. Nice. So there's Baron. Yeah. Getting close to his target and trying to kite away, I like that. Come back in. To finish Annie, probably. Oh, nice. Going for the Ezreal. You don't have your W up. I don't think that was probably worth. I think it was probably better to finish the, st the stationary target. Oh. <laughs> this is another even fight. Okay. Oh my god. It's going to be another even fight. Holy moly. No way. Every single fight ends in like everybody dying and nothing being taken. <laughs> oh man. It's brilliant. So that, that all started off because you guys randomly caught a Leona and got a 4v5 advantage and could take a Baron. So. Whereas the fight before, ran, they randomly caught Bard. <laughs> low you low, man. Not even low elo. This shit happens in Diamond too, man. This shit happens in my games all the time. Just goofy situations like this. So let's see here. Alright. You're pushing top. I just don't think you made enough use out of your teleport this game. So I'm a little surprised because in the message you said you thought you'd use it very well. I think there was quite a few more times where you had better opportunities. Oh wow. That was really good. So another random catch on Echo because he's trying to path an unsafe way instead of walking back to his jungle. Results in him getting chunked to 10%. Maybe you guys can make some play off of that. Both you and Talon are in the base though, so it's pretty unlikely. You're still in the base. What's going on here? Oh, you're looking to make a TP play. Okay. Alright, I feel it. Maybe this is what you're talking about. Here's the ward you're looking at. Probably this one. Okay. What do we got for items right now? There it is. There's that void staff. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. I think you could have got it before. I think you just commit to the play you're going for and just stay there. Like, you guys aren't really going to be able to siege them. Your siege is pretty shit. So I think your TP play is the right idea, to be honest. I would just sit there and wait for it. Like, Bard Ultimate, you teleport in. Well, you, like, you teleport in as Bard Ultimates, then you can get there with home guards and collapse on the fight and follow up. Like, I think that's, like, the dream. I mean, honestly, you guys are just very, very lucky that this Bard is nasty, because this shouldn't, this isn't really the way Bard's supposed to work. Like, he's not supposed to be able to set up, like, amazing ultimates like this every single time. Like, this guy's setting up all these team fights. Bard isn't really typically the, the solo initiator. I mean, it's really good. Your team comp's pretty decent because you have a lot of follow-up on him. So if he does hit anybody, you can follow up. So here's the TP. Let's see if we do anything with it. So we get Spooky Ghost from Bard. Going in hot. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, what the? What? He didn't have vision. <laughs> <laughs> 
So he cleanses the Warwick ultimate right into your ultimate. Okay, so I guess it worked out in the end. <laughs> nice. This is the type of play I was talking about. I mean, it's 44 minutes in the game. We could have probably made a bunch of those already. After 20 minutes, you should just be looking for those plays. Especially when you get Distortions plus CDR boots. That's a lot of CDR reduction on your teleport. So, nice. Now you guys got a 4v2. And sometimes your enemies are stupid enough to fight you and give you a free win. So let's see if that's one of those times. Get your Zhonyas. Alright, nice. And it looks to be one of those times. They're just going to completely throw. This is where your opponent's supposed to basically seed this and defend this. Because now they lose the game when they try and take a fight like that. They take a fight with a d number disadvantage, 4v2. And then they just straight up lose off of that because they're all dead. Right? You guys are just going to win now. Yeah. Okay. Uh... In terms of the game overall, CSing early game definitely needs improvement. Um, I mean, CSing in general needs improvement, like from everybody in the game. But that's more of like a low ELO issue where no one ever goes in the side waves and pushes. I think you could have been a lot more aggressive with your teleport. That last teleport play was pretty good, but you still kind of missed <laughs> missed a little bit. I think the trinket was definitely wrong. I do not like I do not like red trinket on a top laner. I think that is for junglers and. Um, supports especially when you're when you're a tp top laner that's going to be splitting like you were splitting in other lanes and you don't have wards because you had like dorn's rings the whole game so if you're going to do that you need to sell your dorn's ring and grab pink wards but even then you're like placing one pink ward so i just think that the trinket was wrong i think early game csing needs a little bit of work i think when you're going in with your combos and you have a situation to do a lot of aoe damage you need to think about doing <clears throat> your w into your ultimate as opposed to just ulting a single target Unless there's a, like immediate follow-up. And I like that last teleport play at the end there. I mean, obviously it could have been a little bit smoother. But I think that type of play could have been made five times now. Like, you know, after the 20-minute mark, teleport's five-minute cooldown. Even less for you because you got 10% off with your Boots of Lucidity. And then another 10% off with your... Or sorry, 15% off with your uh, Distortion. So you have a lot of time reduction on that. It's like, what, four minutes? Three-something? So... You know, you could have been making five, six, seven of those plays. Seven of those big ultimate teleport plays with home guards. So, I like the play at the end. I think you could make a lot more of those. I think Void Staff was a much better buy than Rylai's. I don't think Rylai's accomplishes anything here. Um, you already got health from your Rod and defensive stats from your Zanyas. I think it's more about your play than anything that's going to keep you alive. And I think if that's a death cap, you just do a lot more damage. And... Yeah, it's much more useful if you do a lot more damage. So overall, I think you played pretty well. A couple things to work on. They're all pretty easy for you to fix. So good luck, man. Good game. GG, well played. Peace.